Hello everyone and welcome back to the World War II Solitaire board game channel. Today we're gonna be playing Terrible Swift Swordfish. Uh, one little note before we start going. I'm not sure if you can hear it because I have a special microphone which I wear on my shirt but in case you're hearing some strange sound it's just my dog Josef who's um, eating on a piece of moose. We shot a moose the, the other weekend and slaughtered it this weekend. So my dog's got a bunch of bones. Anyway, um, terrible swift swordfish. So about setup, setup is really easy. Uh, you just set up the Italian ships. Uh, in the named spots we're playing the historical mode by the way this game has a lot of variants but we're playing the historical ones I think that's a good one to start with we have the counter which indicates if we're in the first or the second wave we have our damage counters in a cup we have our uh, ATD that's uh, the defensive nets torpedo nets counters in a cup 2d6 uh, here off camera I have the flares half of them have the light damage on the background uh, or on the back and half of them have the heavy damage on the back and I have them in two separate piles over here uh, on the left side uh, of the map or of the paper which is the map is on you have the different charts and the chart that we're going to use quite a lot is the chart right here, which is uh, the flag chart. However, um, it's quite small, so when we use that, I'm just going to go ahead and edit the video and put this on the screen so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, I've also here, I put a blank red counter, and that is because when we are doing the flak, uh, any area which is adjacent to an area which has a flak value of 3 or higher will have a plus 1 um, in the column which will be used for flak. So as a reminder, because this is the only area, uh, area in the historical mode which has a flak value of 3, so just to remember that I put this uh, blank red counter so these areas will have a plus one to uh, see which column you will use and just for your information quickly about the flak columns it works that you see I will put it up on the screen right now uh, you see a value up high uh, which is the um, which, which will show um, for example if we are here we have a flak value of 3 uh, and then perhaps we have a flare here so it will be a 3 plus 1 so that's 4 then we will use the second column and on the die roll we will see that on 10 and 11 it will be a light damage on 12 it will be high damage further down the column once we get going uh, in our wave you can see we also have SD and that stands for uh, shot down and the way it works is you will have plus one in the column if you have a uh, flare in your zone or adjacent and those uh, you will calculate them together and then in the first wave uh, every plane after the fourth will have a plus one in flak all the way up to plus eight and in wave number two it will be after the third plane all the way up to plus six so the last planes in the waves, they are going to have quite a high, um, they're going to be rolling in this last, of course, flak uh, column. Uh, so this is the his historical mission log sheet. And I just want to show you, this is the original sheet that comes with the game, which you're allowed to uh, photocopy. And I have done my own version here because you're supposed to write down all of these 21 uh, fairy swordfish planes uh, ID numbers and I'll show you here and 
basically I've just edited this uh, PDF and I've entered those so I don't have to waste my time doing that every time I'm playing because you see there's 21 of them and of course you're gonna have to look at that one type it down and go next one it takes quite a long time and then also uh, if you're playing I added this historical because if you're playing the historical mode um, no matter if you play the historical mode or the other versions there will always be two waves but if you're playing the historical modes there has to be 12 planes in the first waves and 9 planes in the last second wave so then I, you should also enter the wave here as you can see the wave number so uh, I've also done that to save myself and you guys sometimes so you can download this um, uh, not the historical one, but the one with all of the plane IDs. I have uploaded it to boardgamegeek.com. So um, it hasn't been approved yet, but I am guessing it should be soon. So if that's something you want, if you buy this game, which I recommend you do because it's a great game, uh, go ahead and go and download it. Okay, so <clears throat> one thing that is very, very different with this game is that uh, it's very special in, in how it works because before you get going you have to decide the weapon of each plane and then the target and planes with torpedoes may target um, may target the ships and planes with bombs may only target the harbors and we are we we want to target the ships because those are the ones that um that we get most points from and so we have to enter our target here and once you've done that there's you cannot change it i have a rule because it doesn't say specifically that you can't change the target so i have a rule that for example if the target is uh sara uh the ship here and that ship is already sunk i will let my um i will let my plane attack an adjacent uh, ship italian ship instead however in the historical mode there is it's already decided and yes it's six torpedoes for the first wave and five torpedoes for the second wave so uh, I advise you to put quite a lot of time when you're sitting and planning your mission, plan it very in, in high detail before you start it, because once you get started, there is not going to be, you know, you can't do many differences, um, or you can't change it. So, so uh, it's kind of cool. I like it because I haven't played a game like this before where you actually it feels like the game is actually arranging your mission planning your uh, you know route kind of planning uh, where to attack and so on and then you're basically not 100 percent, but almost you're just rolling to see for about 40 minutes to see how your mission um turns out and i get this feeling that you know i'm some kind of admiral or captain who's in charge of this attack and i'm planning the attack and then i'm just sitting you know watching it unfold and you know when you have one of these fairy swordfish you know uh, get shot down you feel uh, partly responsible because you knew that oh man maybe i shouldn't have had that guy go so far into the enemy zone i should have had him bomb something you know on the outer edges where it's safer anyway i have kind of prepared a tactic uh, already uh, but I am gonna fill out this with my weapon and target and so on uh, so for my first um, for my first six um, six planes I, I write horribly you see you know but for the first six planes they're gonna be bombers so they're not gonna be targeting um, they're not going to be targeting ships they're going to be targeting uh, the harbor uh, different harbors and they're going to drop a bunch of flares so that my torpedo bombers are going to have an easier time hitting the their targets however they're also going to be more prone to catching flak so it is uh, it is a dangerous thing to do and uh, the target the first two guys um, 
E4F and E4-5, they're going to target uh, harbor number 3, and that is over here. You can target any area with a red cross, because that means there's some kind of shore installation, some kind of harbor target. The next two planes are going to target uh, number 8, which we have over here. And the last two bombers are going to target number 16. Also, in the historical mode, we can enter from 1, 3, 4, 5, and 9. So those are the places we can enter from. The game doesn't detail about where you can leave, so I play it that you can leave from any zone which is adjacent to the edge. So, for example, you would not be able to leave from 6, 7, 11, or 15. Okay, so then we have our six torpedo bombers, and uh, I'm just gonna write in uh, torpedo over here. And again, I know I am horrible. People think I'm a doctor, I'm just a registered nurse, but the way I'm writing is uh, just as horrible <laughs> as a doctor. Okay, so my first three uh, torpedo bombers are going after Trento. And the other three guys are going after Trieste. And Trento, we have Trento, let's see, he's over here, and Trieste is over here. And these guys aren't, um, they're not battleships, they're, they're cruisers. So we have the battleships over here and the cruisers over there. There's six of each. Uh, and what I say, I say yes, okay, Trieste and Trento. So the other four guys are going against Trieste. And then we have the second wave and the second wave is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I have five torpedo bombers in the second wave and a total of um, nine planes. So I have um, four bombers. So the first guy is going to be a bomber. And he's going to go ahead and bomb number 17. And... I have a reason why I'm choosing these targets with the bombers is because basically it's to drop flares for the coming waves and the coming torpedo bombers and then while I'm at it I'm bombing these shore installations just to score some extra points. Let's see what I say I have five torpedoes yes that's correct so I have five torpedoes and all of those five torpedoes I am gonna go ahead and put in the same target. If you watched me uh, play um, The Hunters or um, Silent Victory, you know that I very rarely fire like a single torpedo at a small target. I rather go for the big targets and fire pretty much everything I have. Uh, so let's see, Andrea Doria is going to be the one uh, that I will, the battleship. That I will try to sink. Let's see, Andre, Andrea, Doria. So yeah. Anyway, like I said, you can get this game from um, Against the Odds magazine website. Published by LPS, you can get this, I think, for $21.95 shipped in the US, $34.95 shipped internationally. And I gotta say that is well worth uh, its price because this is a pretty good game. Uh, and then we have the last three uh, planes, the last three fairy swordfish, and they are gonna be bombers. And um, they are gonna bomb, let's see. <sighs> I'm 
Okay, so I'll think I'll my entry sounds. Oh, I drop one on the floor. One, two, three, four. No, sorry, it's one, three, four. One, three, four. Okay, so I think first of all I gotta pick up the fairy swordfish I dropped on the floor. Uh, I'm not sure number 17 is a good option then. So luckily I have this special pencil which is erasable. So because why I'm doing 17 here is because I actually want to uh, do a flare to give the best possible um, to bomb the Andrea Doria. But perhaps I was thinking of coming from this way because I don't have all of this heavy flak from this side, but it's first in the wave. So I think actually I'm gonna go from up here. And again, it's one, three, four are our entry zones. So I'm gonna go ahead and go number four. And then number four over here and then the la last guys are gonna go ahead and bomb number two okay so that's the plan anyway i'm not sure it's a good plan i have played around for a few ways but i find that the battleships are fun going after but Quite often it's not worth it because it's they need the battleships need five uh, points of damage to get uh, sunk, and the cruisers need uh, only three. And when you draw these, you can get uh, de one damage, you can get zero damage, and two damage. And if you're really lucky, I think there's twelve of these counters. If you're really lucky, you get the sunk one, so you can actually sink it in one chance. And I think that's the. The reason why I keep playing this game because it's like Winds of War, like when you're turning that counter, drawing that counter from the cup is so exciting because it only happened once to me, but when it happens, you know, you jump up and you scream because you're so excited. Um, and I just think it's um, <clears throat> it's a sign of a great game when you get those feelings. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> I think I'm talking slower than I usually am, but we just changed the winter time uh, last night in Sweden. So I'm a little bit tired actually, but I wanted to do this video. So my apologies if you're falling asleep. But anyway, we're gonna get started now, okay? So we're ready, we have done the setup. And the reason why I did this is because, like I said, is it's actually quite a big deal. Uh, you gotta focus when you're doing your mission planning that is really uh, an important aspect of the game so don't just because the first time i played i was just filling it up super fast i just wanted to start playing and things did not end well for my fairy swordfish so really uh, of course the first time you might want to just get going but otherwise take your time okay guys so we're ready and i got all of my fairy swordfish here uh, lined up again uh, as you travel through each area you will take flak and uh, there is a flak value of each of these and um, based on the numbers uh, which you end up with you're gonna choose a column so I am gonna go ahead and take a photo of this column and just put it on screen so you can uh, kind of follow me here what's going on okay so uh, let's use the first plane which is a bomber plane uh, this plane is going to target number three and it's E4F. And again, our entry entry places are 1, 3, 4, 5, and 9. And I gotta check because, yeah, 1, 3, 4, 5, and 9. Lots of numbers to keep in my head. Uh, okay, and um, the question is now because I am gonna go ahead and light. I need to light this area, this area, and this area. Uh, for the bombings of uh, Trieste and Trento and then for the bombings of Andrea Doria I need to uh, flare this, this, this and this area so I want two, three, four areas to flare and one, two, three, okay so total of seven areas 
And I think this guy is gonna go ahead and flare at 8. So you can flare at any time, but you have to take flak first. But other than that, you can flare after or before you actually bomb your target. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is roll now for the flak. So uh, first we have to calculate our flak value. The flak value of this zone is zero, so normally I would not roll. But remember that if there is an area with a flak value of three or higher, you will have a plus one in the column calculation. So we have to use the first uh, column here, one to three. So on a roll of 11 or 12, we are lightly damaged. However, we are not, we make it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and bomb number three now, and on a roll of six to eight, it's light damage. On a roll of nine to 11, it's heavy damage, and on a roll of 12 or higher, it's serious damage. Uh, heavy damage gives one VP, serious damage gives two VP, and um, if you get two of light, it turns into a heavy. If you get two heavy, it turns into a serious damage. So let's go for a roll of nine or higher. And we get eight. Okay, so it's lightly damaged. So we take one of these and put on it. So it's lightly damaged. And then we traverse to the area where I intend to put my flares. And again, we have to calculate flak. So the flak value, you will use the higher the number up here uh, normally. There are variants which use the number uh, in, which is furthest down, but those are just some variants. So use the number which is furthest up. Uh, and okay, so we have three, um, and uh, we don't use the one, the red one, so it will be the first, um, first column. So we roll a five, so we don't take any flak damage. And now we're gonna go ahead and put out a flare. You can only put one flare in each area, and whoop, this guy is gone. Okay, so I like to just light damage plus flare. I just like to do that. I don't, you don't really have to do that light damage and flare because you have the icon here, but I like to do it because it's cool to think about what my guys have accomplished. Okay, next plane. We have 20 planes remaining out of 21. And he will also bomb three, so he starts over here. His flak, the flak value is zero, but we have an adjacent area with a flak value of three or higher, so that plus one. And then we have an adjacent area with a flare, so that's also plus one. So now the flak value is two. So again, we use the first column, and we roll a nine, so uh, we are not affected by that. Um, by that flak. So we're attacking number three again <clears throat> and uh, now we have a plus one to our die roll because of the flare. Any adjacent flare or flare in the same area will give you a plus one. And I think actually before I fire I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a flare. So that is gonna be a plus two now. And my four turns into a six. So again, that's light damage. And um, now I have two light damage in this area. And remember, one light damage, sorry, two light damages turns into heavy damage. So that goes from zero VP to actually one VP. So that's cool. And then I am just gonna go ahead and exit the, out of the same, um, same zone I entered from. Okay, so light damage and then turns into heavy and the flare. Okay, so we have our next guys here. E5A and he's gonna go ahead and bomb number eight. So he, we're gonna go ahead and start him off. Hmm, I think I'll start him off over here because here we have a flak value of two, but we have a plus two from this area and a plus one from that. So that flak value turns into a five. So I would have to use the second column. 
but this area has a flag value of zero, plus one, plus three, sorry, plus two. So that flag value is a total of three. I will use the first column. So you have to kind of think about, uh, you know, this is, this is uh, pretty much one of the few things that you control after you actually plan the mission. So we will roll for flag and we will use the first column and no damage. We go to the next area and we will use flak again, but this time we have a flak value of 3, 4 because of the flare and 5 because of the flare plus 1. So basically the flak value is 3 plus 1 because of the flare in the area and plus 1 because of a flare in an adjacent area. So that is a flak value of um, 5. So we will use the second column now. And still no flak hit, so we're quite lucky. So we will roll for bombing this area and we have a plus two because of the flare and the adjacent flare. And we get seven, eight, nine. So that is heavy damage. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so where do I want to put my flare is the question. Okay, I am going to go ahead and move into 12. And uh, we have to do flak. So it's 1 plus uh, 1 plus 1. So that's 3. So we use the first column. And we're, oops, we're still safe. And I'm going to go ahead and drop my flare. There we go. And I exit of the map. So another successful mission. Heavy damage. Uh, plus flare. So if I do another heavy damage there, I will get a, a serious damage. Okay, so next guy up, he's also attacking number eight. I will start him in four. Uh, one, three, four, five, nine. Yes. That is legal. One, three, four, five, nine. I kind of forget usually where, where I'm allowed to start. And I have my log. I usually have my log to the right, but I have it there now. So, so you'll see it better. Okay, so the first thing we will do is roll for flak. And we have a high flak value here. Two plus one plus one plus one. That's five. So we will use the second column. And ten. Ooh, okay. So we have light damage now unfortunate okay we're gonna go ahead and drop a flare and then we're moving in to number eight which is our target so when you have light damage whenever you enter a new zone you have to roll a d6 if it's a six you have to abort mission <laughs> close call we roll a five okay so now we have to take a uh, flak and let's see we have a flak value of three four five six seven Ooh. so that is gonna be the third column let's see again uh three four five six seven yes that is uh, the third column and if we get two light damage we have to abort the mission and if we get one light damage and one high damage uh, he's shot down so let's hope for a roll of eight or less oh five okay so he's very lucky and I get to roll for attacking and the shore installation and um, we are going to attack with plus one, two, three, four. And we roll a five plus four. That's going to turn into a nine. So that's heavy damage. So that is a very lucky roll. I just barely made it. Two heavy damages on this target means that we have done serious damage. And that is 2 VP. Plus flare. So I gotta say my bombers so far have been very successful. So we'll take this guy back. But you can see here that as we are getting flares, uh, it's also getting becoming quite more uh, dangerous for my bombers. So now we are sending our fifth plane um, in the wave and 
are in the fifth plane uh, in wave one, you will have a plus one in flak. In the sixth plane, you will have plus two. The seventh plane, you will have a plus three in flak, and so forth until you finally have a plus eight on the twelfth plane. So, so it's really getting more uh, dangerous. So uh, this guy, we're gonna start off over here. He is gonna go ahead and target number sixteen, and we're also gonna put a. Uh, uh, let's see, we are gonna put a flare, I guess, in 16 or perhaps 17. Let's see, uh, our next wave, we have one bomber who's gonna attack number four. See how many fr more flares do I need? I have one, two, three, four, and I need three more flares. I got two more bombers, so perhaps I should uh, flare. I should flare number seventeen, I guess, and then fifteen. Okay, so uh, we will roll for flag. He has a plus one, and the flag value is two, so that's flag value three. We use the first column. He's safe. Next area, we have a flak value of zero, but unfortunately he has a flak value of one, so that's the first column again. And wow, 12, so he gets light damage. We move into the next area, we roll 1d6 to see if he aborts. Remember on a 6 he will always abort. Then we roll for flak. The area has a flag value of zero, but he has a one, and then we get plus one because of the flare in an adjacent zone. So it's a two, and we use the first column. And we're all a seven, so we're good. But I am gonna go ahead and put out a flare already. Uh, putting out a flare here. And let's see, I was going for 16. Okay, so I'll move into 16. And 16 has a flag value of 2, and then we have plus 2 because of two flares adjacent, so that's 4, plus 1 from the plane, so that's 5. So we use the second column, and we get 9. Oh no, that is a light damage again. Uh, so two light damages means he has to abort, so he can't attack. So lucky I dropped a flare in 15. So this guy, whoop flies back he made it he's still alive but unfortunately he did not accomplish his mission but he did drop a flare so I'll give him that next guy up L4A he's also gonna attack sure uh, installation number 16 he's gonna drop his flare in 16 as well so he has a flak value of 2 the first flak value of the zone is 2 so we use the second column already Seven, so we're good. Next area is a flag value of zero. He's a flag value of two plus one of the flare. That is three. We use the first column, and it's eleven. Man, these last guys are never lucky. And next area, we have a flag value of four, two from the flares, two from him. So we use the second column. Ooh, that's nice, snake eyes. Okay, so we enter the last area. I have light damage, and I forgot actually to roll for uh, on a six. He would abandon his mission, and then for this zone, we do it again. Okay, one. Um, can't remember if he took flak from that, or okay, so I'm gonna do it one last time. There we go for this area. Again, when he has light damage, you roll a d6 on six, he will abort the mission. Okay, so flag for the last area here, we have a flag value of 2, plus 2, that's 4, 5, 6. So we have a 6, uh, that's the second column. Ooh, okay, so we're good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, drop our flare. So flare is out, and we're going to go ahead and bomb now, and we have a plus 1, 2, 3. So um, that's pretty good. We get 9 plus 3, that is 12, and that is very lucky. That means we have caused serious damage and we gain 2 VP. Wow.
So I gotta say, um, so that's flare. The first, so this is the first part of my first wave, my bombers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and send in my, um, I'm gonna go ahead and send <coughs> send in my torpedo bombers. Uh, but the the bombers, I gotta say, they were really successful because we deployed all the flares that we intended to. We did serious damage to 16, serious damage number 8. Only in uh, location number 3 did we uh, do heavy damage, uh, which is still 1 VP, but to have a perfect strike we would have had serious damage there too. But all in all I think we did pretty good. And I'm just gonna check my camera here so everything is in order. Yes it is. All right, so let's keep going. We have our torpedo bomber. So this is the exciting part. This is what we have been working for, uh, trying to get those flares up in the sky. And that is also one thing I gotta uh, tell you that I recommend you. There is plenty of short documentaries on this uh, the attack on Taranto uh, on YouTube. And I really like how this game follows the, the history of the raid. Uh, that you have to deploy these flares like they did. You're using these really old planes and I just think it's wonderful. You are rolling for the torpedo nets and so on. Yep, I like it. So anyway, let's let's not delay now because we have the fun part. So uh, these guys uh, are attacking Trento and Trieste and Trento and Trieste is over here. So that is in an area where we start. So that is pretty cool because I like, since these are the last guys, this one is going to have a plus three in his flag value, since they are kind of zeroing in on me. And uh, if you're just traversing, like for example, if you're going to, to the battleships, well, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, and that is one thing that you have to kind of make a decision about when you're planning your raid, because if you're going to hit the battleships, well, that is going to be kind of hard. Uh, to do uh, late in the game, I think. What are you doing, boy? My, my dog scared me. Anyway, because because they have the so high flak value, but if you do it early in the game, you don't have the flares out, so it's gonna be, um, you know, it's just gonna be difficult anyway. How are you doing, boy? Um, and yeah, well, then, so that is part of the part of the game. But uh, I said I wasn't gonna. Uh, keep talking but here I am talking so the first thing we have to do anyway is do the flag value and like I said the plane has a flag value 3 flag value of 2 over here in the zone and then there is plus 3 because of the 3 flares and then plus 1 because we have a zone with a flag value of 3 which is adjacent so uh, 2 4 Five, six, seven, eight. So we will use the third column. And we're rolling nine. So he is gonna have light damage, but that that is that is fine. It's gonna make it a little bit harder to hit uh, to hit the um, the Trento ship, but it's not gonna be impossible. Okay, so this is how it works when you um, bomb the ships. Or send torpedoes against the ships. So bombing the shore installations that is pretty simple, as you noticed. But bombing these uh, ships are a little bit more difficult. You have to roll, and uh, then you kind of have to um, draw these uh, counters and so on. All right. So we roll um, for our attack against Trento. We roll two d6. That is a really bad roll. I can tell you right now that I'm not going to hit Trento. Because uh, you will draw a torpedo net counter. And we drew a 1. That's a good counter. And the way this works now is that you take your roll. Uh, and you make plus 1 for each flare uh, that is in the zone and adjacent. So plus 3. So our 2 turns into a 3, 4, 5. And then you uh, subtract the number from this uh, torpedo net, so it turns into a 4. And then the number from the top of the torpedo ATD, 
uh, anti-torpedo defense. So it turns into a two. And unfortunately, we need uh, at least a seven to uh, successfully uh, take out or, or to successfully actually uh, hit the ship. And then uh, I forgot to mention there's also a minus one if you are lightly damaged and a minus two, I believe, if you're heavily damaged. Let me look at that. It's a minus three if you are heavily damaged. So that is, yep, very bad. Okay, so that is bad. That was a terrible roll, but sometimes that happens. So my guy is getting out of there. At least he survived. Uh, I like when they survive. Uh, and we're going to give it another go. So that is going to be the first unsuccessful uh, mission, um, flight. Okay, so we have the next guy, L4C. He has a flag value of 4. So 4 plus 2, that's 6. Plus 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 10. So he's... Can it be so much? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it should have been a flag value of 9 the last time. So flag value of 10 now. So we will use the fourth column. 8. Oof. And 8 is slightly damaged. So you can see how deadly the last waves are. So we roll now for our torpedo attack. And that is a better number. Let's see how we fare this time. It all depends on uh, oof, what you get here, and that is not good. Okay, so we have a uh, plus one, two, three. So we have basically 11 then. Minus one because we are lightly damaged. Minus four because of this counter. And then minus two because of the area. So we have a four. So again we miss. So you can see these torpedoes are very um, very hard to hit with. So our last attack now against Trento. And our guy unfortunately have a plus five in his um, flag value. So that's five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we use Column. We roll four, so we are not damaged. That is cool. We roll for our torpedo attack, and that is not a good roll. Uh, we have a four, so I can tell you right now that is it's not going to hit because again we have plus three here, so it turns into a five. But then minus four, we're already down at four. It's we need a seven to, to successfully hit. I'm gonna try to shake these up a little better. I don't wanna get that four again. Okay, so he returns to base, and again, we have um, a sex, um, successful mission, but we're going uh, against the next one now, against uh, Trieste, so uh, L4H, and he has a flag value of six. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Wow. And he rolls 10. So 10, unfortunately, that is heavy damage. Um, that is going to be hard now to hit the target since we have a minus 3. We roll for our attack. And we roll 8. We have a plus 3. Uh, because of our... Uh, flares so our 8 turns into a 12 sorry our 8 turns into a, um, 11 so let's draw our anti torpedo defense marker which is 3 and then we have minus 3 because we're heavily damaged that's minus 6 and minus 2 that's minus 8 so we have remaining 3 so we need a 7 again we fail wow that is Pretty bad. Okay, so things aren't going very good. The first part was cool, but now things are going pretty bad. We have two more attacks though to resolve. So this guy has a flag value of 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that is the last column. And we're on 5, and we actually make it without taking any damage. So perhaps we can hit. Fiesta now, let's hope so. 
This is um, one of the last guys of wave one. Let's roll for our torpedo attack. Oh, come on, man. That is a bad roll. Six. And we get a one. I don't know, maybe. One, two, three, so plus three. So that turns into a five. We have a nine. Nine minus two. Minus, so that is minus uh, three. So the nine turns into a six. Again, we need a seven to have a successful torpedo launch. And that is uh, sad. Okay, for our last guy. Let's roll for a flag. He has a flag value of eight. This poor guy. I'm just going to note here that L4K um, failed. So he has a flag value of eight. Plus two, that's ten. We don't have to roll. We know it's going to be the last call. And he rolls eight. Eight is light damage. So I think considering the circumstances, that is pretty good. So let's ro roll for our torpedo attack. Uh, seven, that is not going to do it. I can tell you right now. Three turns into a ten. Then we just draw one here. It's a four. Yeah. It's, it's going to be two or something. So we failed there. That is very, very sad. And I thought I would go against the cruisers because they're much easier to take down. They, like I said, I only need the... Uh, three hits to sink while the battleships needs five but we were really unlucky with our rolls there well that is that is the end of the first wave we now go to our second wave so let's hope things go better with our torpedo bombers l4l um let's see who did i miss because L4, I must have used, um, I must have accidentally used a token uh, two times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, uh, I must have accidentally used one of the tokens twice uh, because I did do, as you can see, the twelve attacks. Uh, anyway, uh, we have the next wave, and the next wave is a little bit shorter. It's only nine planes. The previous one was. Um, well, so L4M is going to go ahead and bomb number four. So he will also uh, he will let enter from number four. So his flag value is zero. And then we have a flag value of two plus one, two, three, four. So that is a flag value of six. So flag value of six. Um, that is the second call. They were all eight, so he's good. And then we will roll for his attack, and it will have a plus three because we have the flares. So his uh, five, sorry, his seven turns into a ten, and that is heavy damage. So we're doing pretty good with these short targets. Next, so we have a flag value of three plus. So the 3 is going to turn into a 4, 5, 6, 7. So that is going to be the third column. Not too good. 9. That is going to be a light damage, unfortunately. Next area, we roll 1d6 to see if it works or not. Nope. We have a flag value of 1, 2, 3, let's see, 1. Two, three, four, five, six. So that is the second call. Seven. Okay, we're still good. Going into the next area. We roll one D6 plus six he aborts. We have a flag value of two, three, four, five. That is the second call again. And again we're safe. We made it. So we're in the last zone now. This is where I intend to drop my flare. Because the other guys are gonna attack the battleships here and we have the roll for flag one last time it's going to be a flag value of one two three so we use the first one okay that's cool so he manages to drop his uh, flare so i have completed my flares 
pretty success successfully. All my flares have been able to um, go where I intended. So he did heavy damage. Plus flare. And we still haven't lost any of the fair swordfish. If you lose them, you get uh, minus one DP. Okay, so now I have five torpedo bombers. So this is going to be exciting. They are going against uh, uh, Andrea Doria over here, uh, battleship. And I intend to take this route because there's too many flares over here. That is just going to be chaos. So I'm going this way. So first we have a flag value of two. That's the first column. Close, close call. Then we have a flag value of zero, but we have a plus one because of the flare. So first column again, we're safe. Then we have a flag value of three because we are sorry. We actually have a flag value of four because we have a flare here and then three adjacent ones. So that is a flag value of four. That's the second column. And I, f I forgot to put my microphone back on. So sorry if the <laughs> audio has been bad. I'll see if I can fix that uh, editing. Uh, okay, so we're good. And then we enter the intended area of bombing. And we roll one last time. Flag value of 2 plus 4. So that is 6. That's the second column. 9. Let's see. Oh, we're safe. Okay. So, uh, for, to bomb Andrea um, Doria, let's see, uh, we start by rolling, and that is not a very good roll, whoops, and we hope for a low one now, okay, a one, that's pretty good, but we're not going to hit because the ATD is so high here, we have plus one, two, three, four, uh, so that turns into a 10. But then we have a minus 1 and a minus 4. No, sorry, it's a minus 2 from the ATD. Oh, that's lucky. So minus 3. I think this is the first time we're actually going to be able to shoot. That turns into a 7. So we're actually going to be hitting with our torpedo for the very first time. And when you do that, you will draw from this. And you can still have zero damage because if you're unlucky you will draw the scratched or something like that okay so we at least we got a damaged one so that is always good damaged and then you put it back and you just note on the mission record that you did damage and he flies away uh, then we have number L4R, he's going the exact same route, we have a, a first flak, 7, we're good, second one, we again we have the first, 10, uh, we're good, then this one is more difficult because now we have a flak value of 4, so that's the second column, uh, we're good again, and then now we have a flak value of for six so that is again the second column seven okay we're good okay so we're gonna be able to bomb again uh, Andrea Doria we have already done one damage so let's hope we roll a good roll here seven that is again it's not a very good roll I gotta say I don't know why I can't get good rolls on these um, but we draw zero so it's gonna be a hit because we have a plus one, two, three, four. So it turns into an 11. And then minus this and minus the anti-torpedo defense. It turns into nine. And we only need a seven. So we draw again from here to see how much damage we do. And again we have a damaged counter. So that's the second damage we do. Remember, we need to do five damage to sink that ship. So I fly away. And now we are going to get... Uh, it's going to be a little bit tougher. Because this is the first guy that gets plus one in flak. So we have a flak value of two. 
his flag is one that's the three but it's the first column ah light damage that is crappy rolling one d6 close call but he doesn't give up again we have the first column rolling one d6 now we have a flag value of one two three four five uh, so that is gonna be the second column we're good entering the combat zone can we do this let's hope so okay and the flag is one two three four five six seven so it's the third column oh thank you okay so we're gonna bomb now i'm hoping for a high roll since we're gonna have a minus one since we are uh, da lightly damaged Okay, that is a good roll. I'll, I'll take that. Let's hope for a, roll, a low counter here now. Okay, one. That is perfect. So we have one, two, three, four flares. So our uh, 10 turns into 14. Minus one, minus two, minus one because he's lightly damaged. So our 14 turns into 10. So we have managed to hit with our torpedo. So let's see how high damage our torpedo do does, if it does any. Oh, look at that. Crippled. That is perfect. Crippled uh, is two damage points. So that means I only need one more damage on Andrea Doria and it will be sunk. But I only have two more attacking planes, so it's not going to be easy. L5B enters. L5B has a flak value of 2. The zone has 2, so that's a flak value of 4. That is immediately the second column. 9. Ooh, man, that was close. We made it. Then we have again a flak value of, uh, what did I say, 2 plus 1. So that is the first column. 10. Oh, man, so close. Next one, he has a flag value of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Second column, 8. We're still safe. Okay, I think we might be able to do this. Flag value of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is the third column. Oh, and we don't take any damage. So we roll for attack now against Andrea Doria. Come on, we want a good roll now. That's not a very good roll. I want if if it's over seven, I'm happy. Come on. Ah oh, no, that is horrible. A five. So we have a plus one, two, three, four. So um, it turns into a ten, and then minus two, minus five, that is seven. So it turns into a three, and that is not enough to hit. So unfortunately. L5B made it all the way, but the torpedo net got his um, got his torpedo. So we have one last chance now to sink Andrea Doria. It is L L L five F, who has a flag value of three. So three plus two. It's gonna be the second column. He's good. Then we have 3 plus 1, that's again the second column. And then we have 3 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, that is 7. That is the third column. 5. And I'm getting nervous now. He has a flag value of 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is the third column. Okay, he's good. He's not even lightly damaged, this hero. We're gonna dr uh, drop our torpedo now, and we're hoping for the best now. So this is this is it, guys. This is what it all comes down to. If we hit this, we might have some kind of minor victory, I guess. If we don't hit it, I think it's gonna be a failure. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh no. 
and we got a good one. So two plus three, sorry, plus four, that is um, six. Minus two, that is four. Unfortunately for us, our last torpedo did not hit. That is a shame, but we crippled him anyway, so. Uh, we're sending our last guys now. Uh, bomber here uh, to um, to bomb number four he has a flak value of uh, four so four five six seven eight nine ten we will use the fourth column uh, seven uh, so he makes it he's good so let's roll for the bombing of number four which is already heavily damaged we will roll with plus one, two, three. And we roll five. So that turns into an eight. Uh, that's light damage. Unfortunately, that is one, two less. We wanted a heavy damage because that would have turned it into serious damage. So he unfortunately fails with his mission as well. Uh, L5K is hitting number two so we'll start him off in number one he has a flag value of five five six uh, so he will use the second column but he's good he um, drops his flare he moves in and he rolls to bomb number two with a plus two in his roll uh, five, six, seven. So he does light damage. I was hoping for heavy, but and then he leaves, and that leads us to our last attack of the game. Uh, L5Q. L5Q has a flag value of. I'm just gonna note here. Getting a little bit excited. And that's when you forget stuff. Uh, he has a flag value of six. The zone has a flag value of one. So that's seven, and then we have a flare, so it's eight. So we use the third column. We're good. Moving into the last zone, we have a flag value of six, seven, eight, nine. That is going to be the third column. And the third column, a roll of nine, he gets light damage. And then we go ahead and put a flare. And we will roll for our attack against this place with a plus one, two, three. So it's a seven, a ten. So that light damage is replaced by heavy damage. And rump, my guy flies away. And that is actually the first time um, that I am... Um, that I don't lose a single uh, fairy swordfish plane. That is pretty cool, actually. Okay, so we are done with our raid. Uh, now it's time to calculate our victory points. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, for our bombed shore installations, we have uh, number three here, which is heavily damaged. So that is one, uh, one VP. Then we have number eight, which is seriously damaged. So that is two VP. So we are up to three VP now. Then we have 16, which is also seriously damaged, which is two VP. Uh, and we are now up to five VP. Unfortunately, Trento was undamaged. Uh, Trieste was also undamaged. At number four, let's see where do we have four? We did heavy damage, so that is one VP. So we're up to six VP now. Uh, Andrea Doria, which is a battleship, was crippled, and each crippled um, battleship is seven VP. Let's see. So that turns into 13 VP. That's still very low, I gotta tell you. And then the shore insulation number two is heavily damaged. That's one, one VP. 
So my total VP is 14. And um, 18 to, oh, sorry, 8 to 18 VP is minor debacle. Your career in the Royal Navy is in shambles. So uh, you need at least 19 VP to have a minor victory. And I gotta say, I think I was a little bit unlucky with the with the um, cruisers. I thought I would at least sink one of them or at least cripple it. And crippling one of those guys would have given me... Okay, that's just two VP, but sinking one of them would have given me seven. So... I then would have had 21 victory points and that would be a minor victory. So I think I was a little bit lucky, unlucky. But I was lucky with uh, bombings anyway. And uh, anyway, there you have it. It's Terrible Swift Swordfish. Uh, the, the game about the uh, raid on Taranto with the... Um, what are they called? The um, Fairy Swordfish. It sounds insane what they're called. That. Fairy Swordfish. Uh, well, this is a really cool game and it's a really nice uh, beginner's game if you're new to wargaming because it's not very heavy. The rules are very light, you can see, but they also leave a few uh, things for your own interpretation. Um, not everything is there, but it's kind of easy to just, you know, figure it out anyway. Uh, it's a game that I like uh, a lot, and again, you can get this game from uh, Against the Odds magazine's website, uh, published by LPS. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, it would mean the word to me if you would go ahead and subscribe. Stay tuned, because more videos on Terrible Swift Swordfish is coming. Thank you for watching again. See you next time.